Uh, good evening, Mr. Caldwell, Mr. Carlisle, Mr. Provedores, and guests. Welcome to the Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii and the Alliance of Business Organizations Mayoral Debate 2010. My name is Sherry Menor McNamara, Vice President of Business Advocacy and Govern Government Affairs for the Chamber. We are truly honored to have three mayoral candidates here this evening. This is the first time in recent history, at least for our chamber, that we are holding a debate. We feel that it is critical, especially to not only observe what's going on, but to make the business community a part of the process and encourage our members to get involved in this election. The state of Hawaii faces unprecedented challenges, and it is vital to elect those that will provide strong leadership and proper direction for the future of the city and county of Honolulu. This debate is an opportunity for you to hear what the candidates' views are on pressing issues that affect the business community and learn what measures they will take to posit positively impact Hawaii's business climate. Before I introduce our moderator, I would like to take this time to recognize the members of our Business Alliance who have been working together for the past couple of legislative sessions on important issues that affect the business community, as well as a sponsor who have partnered with the Chamber for this debate. Our Alliance members include the African American Commercial Council of Hawaii, the Associated Builders and Con Contractors, Better Business Bureau, the Hawaii Crop Improvement Association, Hawaii Kai Chamber of Commerce, the Hawaii Korean Chamber of Commerce, the Hawaii Restaurant Association, Hong Kong Business Association of Hawaii, the Honolulu Board of Realtors, the Honolulu Japanese Chamber of Commerce, the Kailua Chamber of Commerce, the Kaneohe Business Group, Native Hawaiian Chamber of Commerce, NFIB Hawaii, Okinawan Chamber of Commerce, and the Vietnamese Chamber of Commerce. As you can see, the business community is well represented this evening. Also, thank you to the Plaza Club for partnering and hosting this event. We truly appreciate it. And a special mahalo to our presenting sponsor, HMAA. And to all of you here, thank you for attending this important event. Our moderator today is Mr. Bruce Copa. Bruce is currently the chair elect of the Chamber's Board of Directors. He recently started his own business, Copa Consulting, and if you're on Facebook, add him as a friend because he'll give you some good notes and good tips uh, <laughs> every day. Uh, prior to this, he was COO of Communications Pacific and also the Executive Director of Pacific, Pacific Resource Partnership. And he also serves on numerous boards and is involved in many organizations. As you can see, Mr. Copa is well-versed as a speaker and a leader. So we'll thank, we're thankful he has agreed to serve as our moderator. And at this time, I'm happy to turn the program over to him. Bruce, it's all yours. Thank you so much. And let's give her a hand for our Sherry, who's really been you know, spearheading this. What I'd like to do is, uh, thank our major sponsor tonight, HMAA, who has stepped up to the plate. This is one of three debates that we're going to have over the next couple of months. Uh, we have the CEO here tonight, Mr. John Henry Felix. I'd like to recognize him, John. <laughs> Thanks again, John. At this time, I'd like to introduce the candidates. We have Mr. Kurt Caldwell, who is the acting mayor of the city and county of Honolulu. We have the former prosecuting attorney for the city and county of Honolulu, Mr. Peter Carlisle. <laughs> okay, and we have uh, <laughs> <laughs> UH professor, Dr. Panos Prevedoros. <laughs> I can see this is going to be an interesting <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the candidates, the format for tonight, the candidates pick numbers prior to the start of the debate to answer each question. So they will have, you'll see different people stepping up at certain times. Questions are centered around business and represent some of the concerns that our members have. And truly, we've gotten input from many of the business throughout the uh, city and county of Honolulu. 
Each candidate will have the following. Two minutes for their opening remarks, one minute to answer each, que each question, 30 seconds to respond to a follow-up question that I will pose to them based on what I've heard from the three, three candidates, and then two minutes for their closing remarks. So with that, <laughs> let's get started. <laughs> so, we have, uh, we have seven questions that we will present and after uh, they make their opening remarks. So based on that, the, uh, to start off with the candidates opening remark, picking the numbers, we start with Mr. Carlisle. The first thing we need to do in the city and county of Honolulu is to get our financial house in order. We can no longer afford government. We can't afford. There has to be more money going into the bank account than is being taken out of it. <coughs> so what is the current state of the city? You can see it and you have felt it. Right now, the roads are bumpy and uneven and deteriorating. I used to say they fought the law and the law won. Now the song has changed to they fought the potholes and the potholes beat the bejesus out of us. <laughs> Sewer lines break almost daily. Our parks are overgrown and burning now under the summer sun. And a world-class attraction, Hanama Bay, has been embarrassingly neglected. The problem is government keeps on building even though we don't have the money to maintain what we've already built. If government is overweight and unhealthy, then the private sector has to suffer the burden. Which is why we need more jobs in the public sector, excuse me, more jobs in the private sector and fewer jobs in the government sector. If you are anti-rail, and that's your only issue, if you will only vote for a Democrat or somebody who has the label of a Republican, if you want to maintain the status quo the way things are, then you're probably not going to vote for me. But if you are tired of business and politics as usual at Honolulu Holly, my name is Peter Carlisle and I'm running for mayor of the city and county of Honolulu. Aloha, and that means change. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Carlisle. Based on the numbers, um, Mr. Kurt. Yep. Good, after, good evening and aloha. aloha. I also wanted to thank all the various business groups for coming together tonight to support this. And of course, John Henry, thanks for your continuing generosity in so many ways. You know, you're going to hear a lot of uh, negative things said about our city. And there's no doubt that we face the worst recession since the Great Depression. But we can't solve the problems that we face by fighting, dividing, and finger pointing. We need to come together as a community to solve these problems. And I believe that as the managing director and as the acting mayor of the city and county of Honolulu, I've been doing that for almost two years, managing a budget of $1.82 billion, a workforce of 10,000 employees, and 21 departments. And I've managed it the same way I was raised. Had been born in Waipahu and raised in Hilo. These small rural communities have shaped who I am and the type of leader I am. It's pulling together to solve problems collaboratively, working with all branches of government and getting the job done. I believe I'll continue to do this as your acting mayor in the next month and a half. And I look forward to working with all of you doing it as your next elected mayor. I'd be humbled to receive your vote and your support, and I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and work with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Bruce. Are you better off now compared to 15 years ago? Is the economy good? Are the roads smooth? Are the parks clean and tidy? Are your taxes reasonable and stable? No, no, and no, and I'm afraid this is the good news. <laughs> the consent decree to fix the sewers and the two sewer plants are $4.7 billion. 
the proposed rail, the local share is four billion dollars. The water main repl uh, replacement is 1.5 billion dollars. Potholes and congestion fixes are about 1.5 billion dollars, and we need another 300 million to fix our parks. All these things add to 12 billion dollars. Now add four billion for the finance charge and the typical 40% construction overruns. What do we get? 22 billion. What does it mean for a typical family of four on Oahu? $100,000. That's right. The current infrastructure backlog liability is 100 grand per typical Oahu family. Oahu needs an engineer to solve our problems not more of the same politicians that left Oahu in a mess. I will stop the rail project, improve the bus, bring real traffic relief, and I will fix sewers, water mains, and pothole roads in a cost-effective way with local jobs that start immediately. I'd like to remind you that this, this city had a civil engineer as mayor for 19 years, Johnny Wilson. This city needs an engineer. A tidy, well-managed city is a great place to do business. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. So now we can roll up our sleeves and get down to the questions. <clears throat> the first question is around business services. And this is something that has come from many of our members from the Chamber of Commerce as they try to do business here in the city and county of Honolulu. Due to the current state of the economy, many industries, such as construction, have faced a huge loss in jobs. This is a time when we need to help businesses in order to create and maintain jobs. However, one of the major stumbling blocks is the apparent inefficiency of government services. What are your plans to improve the system and reduce red tape, especially when it comes to permitting, planning, land use, and zoning. And for this, we have Mr. Caldwell up to bat first. Thank you, Bruce. The number one job of the city is to create jobs for all of us, and that involves permitting. As the managing director and acting mayor, I've been moving to expedite permits on major projects, and we put out the door a couple hundred million dollars worth of work in the past year or so. And that is going to put more valuable jobs onto the street and change our economy for the better and help stimulate it. In addition, despite what you've heard today, we have actually paved or will be paving $150 million of roads between now and the end of this year. We're putting most of the projects out to bid. We've paved roads all around this island. It is the job of any mayor. But what's the benefit of doing that? We're putting a lot of people back to work. This massive sewer and infrastructure project is another job crater that we're launching. We're spending almost $100 million improving our sewers in Waikiki and other areas. This is also a job crater. I'm looking at ways that the Department of Planning and Permitting to create a virtual roundtable in which we will have permits done quicker and faster. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cole. The second on this is Mr. Carlisle. Some of the efficiencies that we currently face in the budgeting and permit, excuse me, in the permitting process can be dealt with with technology. What we need to be able to do is essentially get the technology evolved so that we can get things that they are given proper priorities and ultimately end up going faster because you're going to have set times for something to be done and then we're going to find out that if it hasn't been done, why it hasn't been done and then get something to do it so that it's being done quicker. A lot of people are concerned with the permitting process that it's currently being used in many ways as a weapon. In other words, it's being used for, to reward your friends and punish your enemies. I've heard that over and over and over again. And is that the stop time for me? 30 seconds. Oh, I'm going strong. So good. What we need to make absolutely unsure of, is absolutely completely sure of, is that the process is unbiased. Yes, there will be priorities given to those subjects that need to be given priorities, such as multi-billion dollar rail systems, but in terms of the other parts of it, the more we consolidate, the more we can put people together, the more that we can put them under one roof, the more efficiencies you're going to create. Thank you. Thank you. It's a little inconvenient to start up every time. <laughs> <laughs> I 
think we can just debate this, but up to you. Uh, let me start with the fact. How many complaints does the, has the city received the last five years? 200,000. Something is not right, obviously. Uh, the permitting process has been a long going problem. Government causes a lot of delays, rent loss, revenue loss, idle construction crews, etc., etc. What are some of the solutions? Shift part of the permitting to private architect and engineering firms. It, it can be done and they can be regulated. Mechanics do that for our vehicles. Establish continuously updated sewer, water, and road capacity so people who apply for permits know if their permit work fits. The city owns a lot of land and manages parking. It can get out of it. It can privatize it. We can decouple uh, trash collection um, from the property fees because they, there is a disconnect. Businesses pay high property fees and they don't get tax collection. Okay. And finally... Mr. Pervadoras. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> gentlemen. There's, a, there's something going on here. We, we've identified that there is an issue about permitting. Let me, let me suggest something. There's experts in the government, obviously. There's <coughs> experts that people understand the system and they know it. Well, I will tell you that many businesses in here are experts in what they know. The suggestion has been made maybe at, when you're, if you become mayor, that you come together and bring these experts together to try and make some recommendations to make it happen. Based on that, what, what do you see the first steps in doing something like that, making this, in other words, you've only got two years, this is a two year election by the way, this is only two years for mayor, it's 24 months. Uh, to do what you're suggesting, all of you, um, it's gonna be, have to be fast. And we're saying we've got some expertise, government's got some expertise, how can we use that and how do you see that working? Uh, and based on same Kurt, yes, same, same order. So Bruce, uh, your question is a good one, and I think uh, it would be pulling together the business community along with the public sector. It would be people at DPP, planning and permitting, basically. I'd bring in developers, uh, lenders, and others to consult with, to give an idea to us on how to make it better. Now, I did want to announce we are, in fact, at the end of this month, going to be launching a process where you'll file for permits electronically. And I believe that is going to make a tremendous oh. difference. It's technology driven. We need to do it. And that came from the private sector. So I think reaching out more in this way is a way to address your concern. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Carlisle? The key to something like that is finding who are experts in the area. So what you do is you find out what the facts are. Look at the facts as best you can. Two, then go and find out who is an expert in the area. It may be somebody who you have to get from somewhere other than Hawaii. It may be somebody who's right here in this room right now. And then what you do is you get them to give you their suggestions. You find out whatever biases they have. You go to somebody who has a different point of view, get their points of view, gather as many facts as you possibly can, put it together, and then work together with those people to accomplish what you want to. And make sure you don't pay them more than $1 a year so that we keep the city and county of Honolulu fiscally sound. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much you, for Mr. your Carlisle. advice. Thank you, Mr. Carlisle. Mr. Prevadoras. Um, I would like to take a stab at um, Kirk's suggestion that electronic filing will solve a lot of problems. Actually, the big problem is that the city and county of Honolulu gives indecipherable answers when you, um, you submit a permit application. Most of the time it says not approved and it does not provide any feedback as to what you are supposed to be doing with it. And a second point I want to bring up, we have a duplication of effort. We have land use being managed by the county and also we have the land use commission at the state. One of the two has to go. Thank you. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Just on that note, uh, I was on the Economic Revitalization Task Force under the Cayetano administration. I made the recommendation to get rid of the State Land Use Commission. A year later, the governor appointed me to the State Land Use Commission. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> careful what you wish for. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the program. Uh, I couldn't pass that up. Uh, Did I score a point? <laughs> uh, let's talk about the budget. Um, and as you know, businesses are feeling the pain. Um, no, question two is on the budget. Okay. Uh, as you know, businesses are feeling the pain. Uh, they're going through tough times, reducing costs, 
reducing their budgets, and unfortunately, cutting jobs. Every day they are making tough decisions to adapt to the current economy and changing the way they do business. And every one of us in this room is doing it. If you are elected mayor, what are some of the innovative ways you plan to take to reduce the city and county's budget? And for this, we have second question would be uh, Kurt again. I think part of the way we do address it is we do need to cut our cost. I think we've uh, about taxed as everyone we possibly could through our real property taxes. And I think our fees for service have gone up as about as high as they can. So we need to look for ways to shrink the size of government. Part of that is through attrition. We do have in the past three years, we've put in hiring freezes, spending freezes, and travel freezes. And I'm continuing to do that as the acting mayor. We've restricted spending another one to three percent. But what else can we do? We can grow the revenue. And growing the revenue means putting more work out onto the streets so we have more revenue for all of us. And that way, there will be an increase in revenue in terms of taxes to continue to provide all the services that people demand, no matter how the economy is. Strong or weak, we expect our sewers to work, our water to work, our roads to be repaved, and many other issues. So thank you. Second for this is uh, Peter. The first thing you have to do is get an accounting. You have to find out exactly how much is going out and how much is coming in. And you have to get to the breaking point where ultimately what is going out is actually less than what's coming in. And then you have to basically make those decisions every single t couple of weeks to a month to try and figure out how exactly where you're out. And with that, what you ultimately end up doing is putting all of that information online in real time. Because what happens is, if you have complete transparency, then self-correcting measures are usually taken as a result of people having looked and seen what you've done. And that's a way that you can ultimately end up getting people who know what the money is, know why you're doing, what you're doing, and how you're doing it, and getting it to the point so more money's coming in than going out, and that's a necessity. And it may involve losing people who are in government work and trimming the, trimming the fat when it needs to be fat, trimmed. Thank you. Well, Bruce, there is no way that you will elect a lawyer in charge of 20 billion worth of infrastructure projects and you will get it done at a decreased budget. The priority is to do projects without cost overruns and in a shorter amount of time, increase efficiency then we get project delivery done at a far lower cost. My opponents here, they are proposing to increase the budget tremendously because they have to do the consent decree and build the rail. The rail really does not fit the equation anymore. Uh, by Kirk Hallwell, the rail is about $6 billion. Uh, Mr. Carlisle wants a rail from Waianae to Hawaii and over the Kolaos. That's $20 billion. Where is the money? Thank you. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's been said, I, and I, this is just something that came to my mind, it's been said that uh, private sector tends to be more efficient than government. And we've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's been said. <laughs> is there any thought, if you're elected mayor, of privatizing some of these services to reduce the budgets, to maybe look at how we can reduce our costs in the city and county. And, and, and I think many of you said, is putting jobs out on the street, that's another way of doing it. And for that, we'll do the same order. Mr. Cargo? One thing we did look at is uh, looking at our sewer system to see if there are things that we could do. There are several large multinational corporations who have taken over sewer systems and have done a very good job. And it's something I've met with, and it's something I'll continue to explore. So, Bruce, I think it's a good question, and I'm not opposed to it, but we have to find the right fit to make it work. Thank you. Thank you. Peter? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, we gained, uh, we gained a minute there. Yeah, I got a full minute, so I have four specific ideas. <laughs> and that is trash privatization. We're not going to be the first by far. Uh, parking, there is no need why we should own and operate parking. Housing, 
uh, we should leave it to the private sector to manage affordable housing and energy. We're collecting enough money from H Power, find other energy uh, ventures to get into it, and most of them are profitable. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Good answers. Thank you. The uh, third question we have is on transportation. And as you know, we've been debating transit for a long time. You've all started, you all have stated your views on rail. And while the process is moving forward, what is the single most important step Honolulu must take to address traffic congestion now? And what is the least effective effort to date that you would abandon? And for this, we have Peter up to bat first. I think, is that correct? Yes, it is correct. Peter. Sorry. The most important step, in my opinion, right now, although it's going to have long-term effects, is to basically begin the rail project. If you take a look at the game plan, if you take a look at what people are suffering through on that side of the island, you'll realize that it is intolerable to wake up at 4.15 in the morning, and then only if you don't have an accident, a congestion, or a stall, do you get to Fort Street Mall at 7.15 in the morning, and then start your morning classes. That's no way for anybody to live. What do I think the least effective uh, thing that we've done so far uh, is the idea of building a tunnel next to something downtown, and that's we haven't done, so thank goodness we haven't gone in that particular direction. We're trying, and people are trying desperately to do things already, but we simply can't match the population with the number of people on that side of the island who are going to be there. So if we don't get started on that now, then we're going to be suffering for longer than we need to be. So that's step one. Second on this is Mr. Pervadoros. Thank you. Can I have 10 hours for this thing, please? <laughs> um, first thing I'm going to do, and it's a huge mistake, is stop the rail. It is the 1% solution. Let me parenthetically say that from my components, I own a unit in Capolet, so I know what it is to be out there. Rail will increase the transit share from 6% to 7%. That's what the FEIS says. Rail will reduce car trips by 1%. Congestion in 2030 with rail will be far worse than it is today. And for all this clamor, you pay $6 billion. What is my solution? Underpasses, synchronized traffic lights, and ad hot lanes. The package comes at less than $2 billion, and it will reduce congestion by a guaranteed 33% in less than 10 years tried and true. Trains also tried and true and failed everywhere. A black hole in transit infrastructure never worked to solve any congestion problems. Thank you. Thank you. We need an integrated transportation system, plain and simple. Part of it is rail. I believe we need to build it. I've worked hard on doing it, both when I was in the house for six years and now as the managing director and acting mayor. We need to build rail. But it's more than that. It's making sure our roads are well run, that we have good traffic signals that are integrated, and it is off-grade bike paths, and it is sidewalks. It's all of these things. We are the capital city of Hawaii. The people of this city demand better traffic solutions and choices and alternatives. It's not all about highways and cars anymore. It's not about paving over our aina. It's not about polluting the air or creating more heat. It's about giving people choice to get out of their cars, travel more fast, more efficient, and more economically. And government needs to do that. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I guess uh, when we talk about transportation, I just reflect on some of our, our members, what they talk about. Um, for example, <clears throat> some of the, the concrete suppliers here in Hawaii have to get up and their trucks have to leave from Kapolei at 3 in the morning to, to, to come to town. That has a direct impact on our cost as, as, as consumers and as business people. Government has made uh, some good steps on moving, instead of making the second city a bedroom community, but has tried to move some of their services out there. How do you see yourself as, as mayor uh, doing more of that? And again, that's, we see that as another solution to to traffic. <laughs> oh, by the way, please turn off your cell phone. <laughs>
the idea of integrating everything makes tons of sense. And when you start doing transit-oriented development, that's going to give you a great assistance in getting those things done because what you're going to want to do is make sure you have workforce housing close to the available station so those people can get where they need. Also student housing, it will give them the opportunity ultimately to get there and then hopefully onto the branch that should be coming to Manoa at some point. But it is an integrated system and the buses are least efficient when they're going from a long distance such as Kapolei to downtown. So that's why you need to have the transit going as early as possible for, that, for the reason of efficiency and speed. Um, it is critical that we stay focused. Tra traffic really drains efficiency and drains travel time and resources from everything we do. It's a huge cost to the economy, but the fact of the matter is that the economy rides on the roads. So we need to be focused on that. Diversification and, of course, expanding the jobs and opportunities out in Kapolei is a good idea, but it is very slow, and it will take over 20 or 30 years for your question to be answered and have some balance. We need to do traffic congestion relief now. Thank you. Bruce, I worked on the Kapolei project as an associate at Asher and Risden when it was still of a sugar company. Great things are helping, happening out there every single day in terms, of, in terms of being job creators. We have UH West Oahu just helped expedite the pouring of the foundation. We have the incredible De Bartolo project that's ongoing. We have the Kobayashi development at Target and the continuing build out of that. We have so many businesses going out to that area that people will not only live out there, they're going to work out there. And then we're building an integrated transportation system, North-South Road, the Kapolei Parkway. These are all good things. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Carl. The uh, next question is centered around okay, infrastructure. This is an interesting one. Hawaii has been rated close to the bottom among states when it comes to infrastructure. Although it may not be the most talked about topic, uh, it is an important part of our economy. Small businesses are affected by the lack of strong infrastructure, whether running goods from Kapolei to downtown area or encountering an unexpected waterline break that disrupts our business. When businesses need to fix their infrastructure, they find ways to pay for it. There's only so much that they can do to pass the cost down to the consumers. How will the city and county of Honolulu pay for all the needed sewer, water line, road repairs, and replacement that will be needed? And for this, we have Mr. Prevodoros up the back. Yeah, it, it is a huge problem, and we have a huge backlog uh, thankfully, there are sources for it. We are collecting a lot of money, so some of it will be covered by the sewage fields and the, and the increases. Same thing with water. We have 364 water main breaks per year, so we need to address it. That's why our transportation solutions should focus on road-based solutions, because when you do road-based solutions, you get 80% match from the feds. It is a formula, it's not somebody making it up. For the rail, we're getting at best a 25% match. So what am I I'm proposing here is to do transportation solutions, one third the cost, 80% match. If you have any doubt about it, look at the H3 freeway. It was less than $2 billion, 80% federal. We never really ha experienced any pain in doing that. So we have to reduce the pain and do within budget to upgrade our infrastructure and reduce the congestion that drains Thank the economy. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Sir? Taking care of inf infrastructure is what mayors do. It's what government does. It's something the private sector doesn't do, and there's a reason why. We pay for this through fees, through taxes, and you guys demand that it work. We have a major sewer infrastructure project that when it's built, will continue giving for over a hundred years. It's what we do. We build these things for all of you to make sure that our sewage is treated and taken away. And so it's something we are working on and we spread out the cost so that it's gonna be paid over through the next 28 years. The same for rail. It's, pure, it's financed and will be paid for by 2022. These are some of the projects that we need to build that will change our city forever. And we all benefit, not just us, but our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. It's our heritage, it's our legacy to future generations. Thank you. Mr. 
Carla. There's something called a capital improvement budget, which always has building bigger projects and bigger projects. Stop doing that and go back to the very unsexy, unthrilling work of maintaining what you've got. If you maintain what you've got and you get yourself up to speed, which is going to take a long, long time, then there is going to be less problems with paying for things that need to be fixed all the time. So do that. Do what you need to do to maintain everything and stop looking to the future to build more pyramids that need to be maintained. More roofy, roof, leaky roofs and those types of problems. You can't do that. If you've got 18 buildings and 18 of them have leaky roofs, why in heaven's name are you building a 19th building? That's what capital improvement does because there's nothing for a politician to say, hey, I built this, I did that, I started this project, I did all those things. I'm going to just tell you what, we're going to clean house by maintaining it. That's very unexciting, but it's exactly what needs to be done for a better future for us and generations to come. When will we start to see some concrete evidence of what you're saying here tonight that it's going to happen? The whole process, Bruce, is project management. We need, in order to get di sorry, in order to get timelines and deliver, we need to get our focus on what needs to be done, prioritize correctly, set the right targets. And, and do it within the budget. Timeline is critical. I'm an engineer, that's what, that's what we have. We have the engineering, the timeline, and the budget. You cannot get a contract to deliver a bridge in two years and you deliver it in five. Engineering firms, such as the one that fixed the bridge uh, that fell in Minneapolis St. Paul, they did it in less than one year, including design and contracting. Engineers know how to do it best. And Honolulu is in a crisis situation. Only an engineer really can give you a credible timeline of when this will be done and within the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. I think you would see, uh, as me as the next elected mayor, continuing to push out jobs as fast as we can. And that means permitting. Uh, you will see an electronic permitting process. You'll see a virtual table in which permits will be approved in real time. And you'll see an expediting of permits for projects over $5 million by everyone sitting around that table to make sure that we get that work out. Because it's about putting jobs out on the street and changing from a slow slog out to a more rapid climb out of the worst recession since the Great Depression. Thank you. Thank you. Peter? Financial house in order would be anywhere from three to six months, I would hope. Can you pick up oh. the mic? Financial house in order anywhere from three to six months. You're going to be able to see it immediately because it's going to be going up in front of you. Transparency we can do very rapidly, probably within two or three months. And in terms of uh, rail, the sooner we get that shovel in the ground, the better. Every day we delay, we're losing time, we're losing money. I have not been calling the person who is now in charge of the timeline with uh, it, which is Governor Lingle, names. We have a decent relationship. I would go to her and I would ask her, to do whatever it is that's possible to get it done as quickly as possible. I've already spoken to Laura Thielen. She's talking about the problems with the finding of uh, ancient remains. She is not in the way of that. She simply has to do her due diligence. So we're ready to go quickly. Okay, I'm not going to give you a follow-up on this, but again, I, I just want to remind you that uh, it is 24 months. And you, it's going to be a sure thing. So you've made a lot of good suggestions here tonight. And uh, we appreciate that. And again, for the people that are in this room, these are our business people that are working hard every day, having to make the cuts, having to look for new ways to create create revenue or reduce revenue, you know, reduce our cost. And, and so, I guess we're trying to convey tonight to you, as the candidates, that when you're elected mayor, we want you to feel that same that we're feeling every day, and understand that. Uh, so again, that comes back to that. Uh, I call it relationships or partnerships. It's it's that understanding all for you. So, I. I appreciate you uh, taking the questions tonight. Uh, I think at this time we're going to ask for the uh, your closing remarks, and then um, I'll come back and make some comments. So with the closing remarks, um, Mr. Prevadoris. Um, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be part uh, of this um, panel. Uh, mayor job is an important job. 90% of the job of the mayor is infrastructure and operations, police, fire, ambulance, emergencies. I have personally managed projects in excess of $2 million 
and I have been in partnerships to develop actual infrastructure in excess of two billion dollars. I am a product of small and large businesses. I know what it means to get a business loan, to make payroll, and to manage operations. I have been a consultant with over 20 local businesses on actual projects, engineering and law businesses. And, I, and an interesting fact is also that half of the engineers that work at the city and county have been my students. <laughs> it is well known that a mayor and the council and the mayor and the governor have not been working very well together. I come with no political baggage or any kind or no skeletons in the closet. I can bring groups together and in times like this, everybody needs to work cooperatively. I will be the captain of Team Oahu. We really need to fix it. I'm only interested in the Honolulu mayor job. That's what civil engineers do. With me as your mayor, for the next 10 years, I imagine <laughs> that administrative stability and fact-based decision-making will help us make progress in the long punch list of unfinished work on our beautiful island. I bring the technical and project focus that will force departments to perform. Knowing the technical aspects by heart means that I can focus clearing up the red tape and get things done. Join me and work Thank with you, me Mr. to Robert return Norris. Oahu to its postcard perfect image that we and our visitors expect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I just, just to remind you, this election is for two years, not ten. I am slightly Lincoln, ambitious. Lincoln. <laughs> Peter? It is unavoidable to reach the conclusion that there are a tremendous number of challenges that are confronting us. But at the same time, I am thoroughly optimistic because I think we have some advantages that other people don't have. I think that what we have on this island state is a sense of community. And I do believe that we can draw on that, the Ohana is what it's usually referred to, to get people to stop thinking too much about themselves and to start thinking about the greater good. We, most of us who are part of the baby booner generations, know what we owe to our parents who were willing to go off and fight in the great conflagration of war, World War II to give us the freedoms that we have today. I would hate to think that it's our generation that becomes the we generation that only worried about themselves. We cannot continue business as usual, continuing indebting ourselves, the next generation, and the generation after that. And that is right the road that we are on to right now. It is going to take fiscal responsibility and management, no strings attached, no political agendas, hiring people because of what they know, not who they know. If we do all of those things and we let them do their job and not, not micromanage, God forbid you put somebody in there who's a power and control type. They're the worst of all possible types of managers because they can't get over themselves. Your job is to put the best people in the place, let them row, and your job is to be the helmsman to try and figure out where the future's gonna be. We can do that here more they can, than they can do it almost anywhere else because of who we are and what our culture is. And to get there, you need somebody who actually knows how to be a manager. So you get to make your choice among the three of us in that regard. Aloha. Thank you. Mr. you get to close it? Yes. I want to thank the chamber and all the related groups for hosting us tonight. I want to thank all of you for sticking with us and not falling asleep, and I want to thank our, our candidates here for a lively debate. Um, I told you in my opening that we have a lot of serious problems, and listening to descript description tonight, you may want to ask, why are we all living here still? And for me, for me, this is the most incredible place on earth to live. And yes, it is the natural beauty of this place. It is not comparable to anywhere else. But really, really, it's about us all the people who live here. Without that, we're, it's not anywhere. And for me, it is about my daughter, my Hisako of 16 years, mm -hmm. and my wife, Donna Tanoi, who's right over here, who I've been married to almost 30 years. It's about them. It's about doing better for them. And at the end of the day, 
it really is about doing better for all of us, for all our loved ones, for our families, for our keiki. And if we don't do that, then why are we running for mayor? Why are we in government? And we need to do more. It means creating meaningful, well-paying jobs so that our children and grandchildren can continue to work and live here and be able to celebrate life like we have. It means trying to live better. That means a greener city, a more dense urban core, preserving our outlying ag land so they can stay in food and fuel. It means an integrated transportation, transportation system. It means rail so people can get to work faster and be productive at home with their loved ones. It means slowing things down a bit so you can spend more time with your families in your neighborhoods again. So thank you again. I would be humbled to receive your support. I'm ready to roll up my sleeves, and I look forward to working with all of you. Mahalo and aloha. Thank you, gentlemen, and best of luck as you take on for the next um, two years. Next two years. <laughs> Not um, <laughs> uh, One of the things that the chamber uh, would like, and I'm, I'm sure the other organizations would like, there was many things said tonight. If you're elected mayor, we would like you to come back and give us an update uh, on how things are going, and more importantly. To, keep, to remind you that we already also, with our sleeves, roll up and, and help you as if you're the uh, mayor for the city and county of Honolulu. Um, I invite you to stay after. Uh, we're going to have some poo poo, some drinks, and you have an opportunity to meet with and hear from specifically the businesses that are here tonight some of their concerns, maybe more in depth. Um, one thing I do want to say is uh, we got to vote, guys. Okay? And so I think. Registration closed on the 19th? Yep. The 19th? Yep. Okay, yep. the 19th. I encourage you, if you haven't registered to vote, do it. We have a table outside where you can register. More importantly, we have absentee ballots out there for you, ready to go. So what you heard tonight is the future leaders of the city and county of Honolulu, which are going to have a direct impact on our businesses and how we do business on a daily basis. So listen carefully what each candidate said. If you haven't registered, Sign up, and then on the day of the election, go out and vote and make your voice be heard. I can't thank you enough for our first debate here tonight. It's uh, it was kind of new for the chamber, but you you guys have really uh, helped us get along and move it up. And to the members here tonight, thank you for joining us.